Hey guys, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm going to give everyone two more minutes to join us and then we're going to start and we'll talk about all our supplies and everything else. Just want to give everyone another few minutes to make sure we're not missing anyone who was actually hoping to paint along live on YouTube. And if this is your first time joining, just want to mention that video will remain available here on YouTube. It's not going anywhere, so it's going to stay right here. Um, if you need to come back and do it any other day, that's totally fine. All right, we'll wait one more minute and then we're gonna move straight to our painting here. All right, so welcome guys, welcome again. If I haven't met before, my name is Vera. I will be your instructor for today and this is what we're gonna paint. Super fun, can say that it's too easy because it's not, it has a fair share of uh, difficulties, but it also really free flow other than a chair. It is super free flow, so it's almost like has an element of abstract to it in a way. Um, this, by the way, the blanket I added last minute, um, originally didn't have a blanket, but I thought it would be good because there is a nice chair by the water. It's clearly fall, so though it's probably a little bit cold there, right? There's a nice hot beverage, so I thought blanket would be very appropriate. So what are we going to need for today? First thing you're going to need is a canvas. You're welcome to use absolutely any size canvas. I'm using fairly small. This is eight by 10 inches. You can see in comparison to my hand, it's not very large, but the, don't let that limit you on size. If you wanna go much bigger than that, go for it. There's nothing wrong with going bigger. Bigger or smaller is totally up to you. Um, my instructions are not size specific at all. So you can go as big or as small as you want. The only difference you may need to adjust the size of your brushes according to the size of your canvas you decide to use in the end. So if you go with a larger um, canvas, you might want to grab slightly bigger brushes than what I am using. And if you want to go smaller, you might want to grab slightly smaller brushes than what I am using. But that really is the only difference. Next thing you're going to need is brushes. I'm going to be using, and we always recommend generally having three different brushes, large, medium, and small. For this particular painting, for me personally, I don't necessarily need a very large brush because they're next to no large areas. I will still, however, grab it and I'll use it on a couple areas that are large-ish. Um, so yeah, this would be my large brush. As you can see, it's not massive again because my canvas is fairly small. Um, then we always recommend having a medium brush because medium brush is usually the most useful brush you will get in any painting, it does the most job. I'm gonna do this one for today. 
So I'm gonna do rounded, medium, and large. And for the details, you always, 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 no matter the painting, need a small detailed brush with a pointy tip. So um, this one, the size is not gonna change regardless of the size of your canvas. Big or small canvas, you're still gonna need a small brush with a very pointy tip. So this is my set. If you have more than that, if you have, let's say, 10 good brushes in different sizes, great, awesome. You can use them all just to find whichever one you think would be best for every step and use that one. And it's just good to have variety. So for larger areas, it's always faster and easier and gives you best coverage to use larger brush and for medium areas, medium brush and for small areas, small brush and so on. So pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna put them aside for now. Next thing we're gonna need is a pencil. Just a regular HP pencil, nothing special because we will be starting with a sketch. We're gonna sketch maybe not everything out, but a lot of elements out. So um, pencil is important. If you don't have a regular HP pencil, it's not a problem, you can use any pencil, but HP pencil is just preferable, or a graphite pencil, any graphite pencil is preferable because it's easier to erase versus let's say um, colored pencils. Colored pencils are a little bit trickier to erase. But any pencil will do as long as it's on a lighter side. Uh, you can use that for sketch. And if for any reason you don't have any pencil, you can always grab a small brush and a light paint, such as maybe light blue, and sketch with that. But of course, pencil is preferable. And we're gonna need some water. We're gonna need a paper towel. Where's my paper towel? Hmm. That is a question. I will find it. It's somewhere around. Don't know where it is though. It's okay. I'll look at it in a second. We're still gonna start with a sketch. And then we're gonna need, oh, found my paper towel. Sometimes when you have children, things just go missing in the places where they're not supposed to be. Yeah, and then you find them in the places that they're not supposed to be in. All right, paper towel. And a uh, paint. I'm gonna be using, again, very standard set of what we always use, which is primary colors only. And that is yellow, red, blue, plus black and white. And I'll be mixing everything that you can see here out of my primaries. However, if you guys just not a big fan of mixing, uh, in addition to your primaries, I would highly recommend getting brown because brown is usually the trickiest color to mix. So by having it pre-mixed, you're just gonna sa save yourself some time mixing it and potentially some frustration if you're not big fan of mixing. But also I'm gonna show you how to mix brown. So if all you have is primaries, that's plenty, more than enough. Alrighty. And now we can move to our drawing. So we're gonna start with a sketch and I'm gonna grab my pencil. And the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna decide where my horizon line is going to be. And I would say it's just gonna be a little bit above the middle. So I usually start by putting a middle to my canvas. So I decide where the middle is and I put a little dot. That's more like a reference dot. So that I can refer to it. Um, so here's the middle in this one. So you know how much, how much, when I say a little bit further than the middle, how much is a little bit, right? So a little bit further than the middle is gonna be around here for me personally. And I'm just gonna put one horizontal line. That's for the line where the water meets with land and trees. So just one line. After this, I'm gonna move on to sketching my mountains. So, um, and I'm gonna mirror them to the bottom right away. So if let's say I do one on the top, I'm gonna mirror it to the bottom. Then I'm gonna do next one on the top, mirror it to the bottom. I personally find that it's a little bit easier to do that way versus finishing the whole set on top and then trying to mirror the whole set to the bottom. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfect mirrored reflection. So as long as it's similar, that's all we're looking for. So we'll start with my first mountain. 
I would say it's going to be about half of the height of this whole thing, somewhere on the left. So I'll start with putting the top of my mountain, and it can be any shape. Like there's no particular shape, but it has to be. Just put a mountain. However you make it, that's going to be your mountain. And then I'm going to try to mirror that to the bottom. So I try to usually put it right on the same, right under, right? So again, I'm going to try to find the tip of a mountain first, make sure it's right under, make sure it's, it's approximately the same distance from here to here, from here to here. And then I'll just mirror it to the best of my ability. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not perfect. That's all right. You're not going to see it. All you're going to see is the tips of those mountains. That's all you're going to see. You're not going to see the whole thing. So don't be hard on yourself and don't stress over it. It's not worth stressing over. So that's my mountain number one. Then I'm gonna do my mountain number two. I'm just gonna do this little one behind. So it just picks somewhere here, just a little peekaboo mountain. Kind of disappears into the distance. And again, I'm gonna mirror it on the bottom, like a little peekaboo mountain. Again, super approximately. So great, I have my two, one, two, one, two. Then I'm gonna have another large one and another small one. So this two are gonna be above this two, do you see? One, two, and this two, they go behind them. So they go a little bit higher. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna start with the large one. Um, it's gonna go, higher it's going to be taller it's going to go until maybe around here and the tip of it is going to be really on the right side not right at the edge but fairly close i would say and just going to give it some sort of shape All right, so that's one mountain. Again, I'm gonna mirror right away to the bottom. So approximately, I will try to put it on the same distance from the side and the same distance from the water, uh, from the this line of water meeting with the land. So I would say that's approximately here. And from there, That looks close enough to me. And then one more behind it, and it's gonna be a bit more to the left as well, so it's not gonna go as high. It's actually gonna be a bit lower. It's just gonna peek somewhere around here. So another peekaboo little mountain. Peekaboo mountain. Peekaboo. And the same here. Let's try to mirror it. Mm. All right, wait. Okay, that looks better.
So we have our mountains. Then I'm gonna move on to my trees and I'm just gonna add general curve for the trees. I'm not gonna clearly um, draw each and every single of the trees. So just general curve and by curve, I'm actually not drawing the top of the trees, I'm drawing this line. So do you see where the trees become solid? Not where the trees, you can see just the top. So this is gonna be the line. I'm gonna go right here. So it's gonna be a bit I guess smaller distance that you're zoning out because uh, the trees are gonna go slightly higher than that line. So keep that in mind. And it's just gonna be a little curve with um, higher points on the sides and lower in the middle. That's all we're looking for here. There's no, there's no complexity to the curve. It's just a curve. So something lower on the bottom, something higher on the top. All right, and the same for the bottom, because again, we're, we're, we're adding reflection of everything. And then after this, I'm gonna draw my dock. Very simple, actually, dock is super simple. We're just gonna start with one horizontal line. I would say about halfway through, from this water line and the bottom. So just halfway through, we're gonna put one horizontal line. So between this line and this, halfway through, I would say for me is personally somewhere right here. So I'm just gonna put one horizontal line. You can make it wider or thinner. That is entirely up to you how wide or thin you wanna make it. I would say generally I'll make it about half size of this width fully. Uh, so I'm gonna leave about quarter on each side. Again, that's super approximate. Like if yours is a bit bigger, not a problem. If yours is a little smaller, not a problem. And I'm gonna bring this down. You can bring it down straight to the edges. You can bring it down a little bit further than the edges. You can bring it down a little less than the edges. That doesn't matter at all. It is more of your personal preference, how wide you want it to be. So where I originally made it, it made it just above the edges. So it was a little bit wider like this, but this time I'm looking at it, I feel like why not make it a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller this time. But again, that doesn't matter. Whatever works for you guys. So the table and the chair, we can sketch them right away or we can sketch them later or we can freehand them. This is an option for you to decide. I think just to be safe, I'm gonna sketch them right away. Um, so you can see how they're sketched before we move to painting because it's easier to understand now while everything is still super white, right? There's just white cameras. There's no color on a background yet. So it's easier to see and easier to understand but generally, let's say if I was painting for myself without making it into a tutorial, I would not be sketching this. I will just either paint everything else first and then let it dry and then sketch it, or I would just freehand it. But either way, I would not be sketching it prior. And the reason why is you're gonna paint right over it. You're not gonna see your sketch in the end. Best case scenario, you will likely see somewhat of an outline of it, but it's not gonna be enough for you to go by it. So you will still need to sketch it again later. But I will show you how to sketch it now, again, just for the visibility reasons. Um, and it doesn't matter here whether you start with a chair or you're gonna start with a table because there's no particular positioning. Table could be moved this way or that way, a chair can be moved that way or this way. As long as you have a chair and a table, that's all that matters. And you can make it more of a couple situation here and position one chair and two chair and a table in the middle. Um, so that's totally fine too, just double the work with the chair, and chair does seem to be the trickiest element here overall, so up to you. But again, giving you option on how you wanna position it. If you wanna make it like a full group setting, you can put four chairs and a table. So again, sky's the limit. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm gonna start with my chair, 
And I'm actually going to start by positioning um, this part of the chair. So do you see the sitting part for the bum bum? And it's just going to be a little line like that on an angle. Then I'm going to position another line. And that's going to be a line that comes from here. And that's for the back of the chair. So those are all our lines. See line, line, line. And then the back of a chair. Seat, back. No legs. I'm gonna add the arms. So the arms of this chair is going to go from here to here. It's going to be an armrest. And then there is going to be a leg supporting all that. And then there is going to be a back to this. And another leg going down. Same on the other side. And there's going to be this thing. All right, and that is pretty much your chair. Um, if you wanted to add any extra elements, because sometimes chairs will have like another board here and all that fencing, so you can, but this is a simplified, because again, um, I don't know if you want, how much time you really want to spend on your chair. So that's entirely up to you. Again, how complicated you want to make it. You can just Google a chair of your liking and add all the um, fancy details and just copy that. Because again, this one is a little bit simplified for the sake of not making it too complicated. So that's one chair. And then I'm gonna add my table. So the table, I just start with a straight line. And then on that straight line, I position the round tabletop and I give this one thickness and a little leg something to stand on with a little foot maybe a coffee mug on it with the handle again you don't have to sketch it because we're gonna paint right over it so you're not really gonna see any of it but it also is fine to sketch it. And then if you want to add a blankie, I'll add a blankie here, just like a little red throw there. My sketch is done. So I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes for this. I'll just fix this image on my screen for a little bit, um, maybe two minutes. And then just to finish and uh, finalize the sketch, that's for anyone who is attempting to actually paint along to catch up. And then we're gonna move to our painting part. For those of you who are just watching today and you're not painting along, that's okay, you can always do this later. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be quiet for two minutes. Don't think that I'm gone, I'm right here. And your computer is not glitching, it's not stuck. I'm just giving everyone a minute to catch up on a sketch. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in, in chat and I'll be happy to answer them for you.
as we wait. All right, do we have it? Hopefully we have it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I will lighten up my lines a little bit, not all of them. Mountains are fine, I, they don't need to be lightened up, but you can. Also, wouldn't be a mistake. Um, if you sketch the chair and the dock, you don't need to lighten that up. But what I do really wanna lighten up is my lines for the trees. I don't want harsh because again that's not the top line. That's like the line where um trees are gonna become solid. But generally I just don't want to see it in the end. I don't want to see any of it. Uh, mountain I find because we're gonna follow those lines you're not gonna see them as much but this line is tricky and you may end up seeing it so I always like to lighten it up. For the lighter mountains, it is a good idea to lighten them up too. Again, for the same reason, so you don't end up with a harsh, visibly dark um, and, or darker than it should be line. The other ones are fine like that, but again, if you want it, you could lighten them up. It wouldn't be a mistake. So what I'm gonna start with here is I'm gonna start with sky and water because that's pretty much the same thing here. It's the same colors, the only difference is technique. Sky is going to be a little bit more of a wavy technique. It's going to be really fluffy clouds where the water is just going to be horizontal brush stroke and more of a blending um, than trying to create a texture. Where the sky, we're going to focus more on texture. Um, but it's going to be the same color. So it's going to be light blue. It's going to be some purples. And there's going to be a tiny smidge of yellow added. So it almost looks like a teal in certain areas. So we're gonna start by mixing that. I will grab my large brush, but either large or medium is great for this. So I'm gonna grab my large brush, I'll dip it in water, and then I'm gonna scoop some white on the side. I'll add a little bit of blue. And I'll make this color. So this is not your typical color. As you can see, it's not just white and blue. White and blue is much, much brighter and more vibrant than this. This one has a storminess to it because we're creating the scene of um, fall day where there is a lot of raining, there's some cloud, there's some a bit of a darker clouds in the sky. So we're not creating a spring or summer bright blue sky. We're creating more of a before or after the rain sky with a little bit of storminess to it. So I'm gonna start with this blue, then I'm gonna take the tiniest, tiniest smidge of black, don't add too much, and add it in. 
And you see it's starting to have this little tint of gray. I think I may even add a little bit more blue to it at this point. Yeah, oh, this is good color. This is beautiful, that's what I was looking for. It's colder, it has a little bit of heaviness to it. Um, and I will use it, I will add some lightness to it too, it was just white. So what I'm gonna do with this color is I'm gonna start at the very top. I'm gonna cover up a little area here. In a messy, messy way. And then I'm gonna wash my brush, dab it on a paper towel, take straight white. And for the bottom, I'll start adding straight white and literally just blending it in a, again, quite a messy way into my bluey gray color. You see, it's, as it blends, it creates this lighter color anyway. So lighter blue in a way. So I'm gonna fill the rest with that. And I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna move on to my bottom. And again, I'm gonna go back to the stormy bluey gray color. And I'm gonna start by filling in this corner. Then I'm gonna take some white and notice how I'm a little bit not careful at all actually. I'm a little bit messy here and I get on to the nearby sections and that's okay, that's intentional. We're gonna clean it up later. Then I'm gonna take some white, wash my brush, dab it on paper towel, take some white. And from the top down, again, I'm just gonna add some white and I'm gonna create some blending here too. If you wanted to go a bit more complex, you can make another shade of blue that either gonna be bluer or even grayer and just repeat that with your second shade. So for example, I'll make another shade that's a little bit darker. Again, it's the same components, so blue, black, and white. Just make it slightly darker. And I can add another little smidge here just for complexity again. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit of complexity. And I'm gonna wash my brush, dab it on a paper towel, make sure it's nice and dry. And then I can somewhat blend it here and here. Same, I could just dry brush blend it. Or you can take some white and blend it with white. It really is whatever works for you guys but I'm not looking for a perfect blending. I'm still looking for some texture on the top. All right, so that is the beginning of our clouds. Then we can move to our purple and we're just gonna start by making purple. Purple is blue and red and white. So I'm gonna start with scooping some white on the side here. I'm gonna add some red and some blue. And you can make any shade of purple. You can have it a bit more on a warmer side by adding a bit more red. You can have it on a colder side by adding a bit more blue. Either is fine. 
You can have, again, multiple shades of purple. Um, you can start with one and then make the second one and add it as addition. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by adding my first layer here. So just a little wave here in a way, cloudy wave. And I'm gonna take some of this paint, not all of it, some of it, and add a bit more white to make it a smidge lighter. And that's gonna be my second layer. So a bit lower than the first one. And I have my second one. And then I'm gonna take, wash my brush, dab it on a paper towel, take a little bit of white. And here I'm gonna clean it up with the white. But what I'll also do is I'm gonna dry brush some white on my previous layers too. So I'll dry brush some white right here to lighten up the end of this layer. All right, so that's my clouds. And while I still have my two purple colors, I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna add them to the bottom. So starting with my darker purple, then my lighter purple, and then some white to blend and merge all of that. And then the last little thing that I want to add on to my water and my sky is a tiny smidge of yellow. So what you, what you could do, you could either use straight up yellow, and I don't mean straight up yellow, I mean actual yellow. So just, you're going to make some white and some yellow, you're going to make it very, very light, but it's still going to be yellow. So something like this, and using just the bare minimum on your brush, you're going to dry brush it on. Other options, you can make it into a teal and use it that way. So if you use straight yellow, you're just gonna dry brush some on. And you sky, make sure your yellow is like a super light and a pastel version. You don't wanna have it like a bright yellow. It has to be really, really mixed with white. And then you super, super lightly, just editing, we're assuming that there's some sunshine is coming through somewhere there through all of that cloudiness. You can add a little bit of that anywhere you want on the sky. Or again, you can do teal instead, which teal is, um, if you still have a little bit of that blue, you can just take some lighter version or take some of that add white and that add your yellow. And it's gonna be more of a greenish teal tone, but still make it light and you can do it that way. The result in the end is gonna be about the same, because as you dry brush this over blues and purples, they will uh, visually, it will get lighter and visually give you different tone. It's not gonna read full on yellow. It's gonna read more of a greener teal color because because of what you're adding it over. So I added some here and I'm gonna add just a little bit of that on the bottom. But again, notice how light my yellow is. It's like super, super pastel, and I'm barely using any. Just a dry brush technique with next to no paint on my brush. And the same right here, I'm gonna add it closer to the slider areas. 
So just a little bit of that sunshine on. All right, and that's my background. And this is how little you want to have it on your brush. Do you see if I do it on my hand, this is the mark that it leaves. This is how little bit I'm using. So that's our sky and our water. After that, we're gonna move on to our mountains and I'm gonna do mountains approximately the same color. Do you remember that? stormy blue that we made here. So this is going to be the all the shades of that stormy blue. You're going to start with the darkest one for your first mountain, then the next darkest one is going to be this mountain, then the lighter one, lighter one. You don't have to do your mountains in that order, but that's the order of darkness pretty much. So I'm going to start again by making my color because I don't have much of it left. So take some white, and you always want to make the darkest version first because it's easier to make it lighter. You just add some white to it and there you go. But it's a bit trickier to make it dark, or at least that's how I prefer it. Just a little smidge of black. You don't need a lot of black because black just makes everything grayer and it loses the color. So it's best to only add a tiny smidge of black for storminess. And you don't want to turn it into a full-on gray either. So I think this should be a good color. Oh yeah, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And you can use any brush for this. For the large mountain, I can still get away with a large brush here. But for the rest of them, probably medium brush, because I don't think I can create those with a large brush. So I'm going to add my first mountain. On the top and on the bottom. And another thing I quickly want to do right away is I'm going to wash my brush, my large brush, put it aside. And I'm going to grab my medium brush here or something. You can even grab a smaller one, doesn't matter. Just something on a smaller side. And I'm going to take some white, just a little bit, doesn't have to be much. And I'm going to highlight the tip of it because I just want my tip a little bit lighter. Not a lot, but do you see, it gives it that fogginess, that softness. I don't want to have the harshness of those lines. I want to soften up my tip. So that's why I'm doing it while it's still wet, so it blends into a lighter blue there. And again, just a little bit of it. You see, it just softens it up. That's all it does. Now I'm going to do that on the top and on the bottom. Oops. The brush was trying to run away. If you wanted to originally when I was making it, I added some darker color in there too. So if you wanted to, um, you can take maybe a smidge more black or purple even and just take a darker color and just add some darker shading in the middle, just a little bit, but don't go to your edges, just so it has a bit more substance in the middle of some kind. Again, it's not very important, it's very, very optional. So done, I'm gonna to move to my next mount and I'm gonna to move to this one and to this color that I used for the base of this mountain. I'm gonna add some more white and that's gonna be my color for my next mountain because it needs to be lighter. So I think this should be, oh yeah, that's a great color. 
That's perfect. So we're going to go on into this one. And again, right away on the bar. Then again, I'm going to make it even lighter by adding more white to it. And then I'm going to move to my next mountain, which is going to be this one. And the last one, again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll add even more white to make it even lighter. And then I'll add my last mountain. And then before all of that dries, I'm actually going to go in with white. This is what's going to separate my mountains from one another. So I'm going to wash my brush, dab it off in a paper towel. I'm going to take some white and I'm going to almost add white in between all the mountains. So I'm going to start with the last one and I'm going to add some on the background. to Separate it a little bit from the background. So add it and then kind of merge your white into the background a little bit. So almost like highlighting the back end of that mountain. And you can do first top and then a bottom, or you can do them simultaneously. It's whatever works for you. See, I did some on a bottom too. And just merged it into the rest. A little horizontal brush stroke. So you can even do a little bit of uh, wash with water. And then my next one between these mountains. Again, merge it into that background there. And some on the bottom. And then I'm going to do behind this mountain too.
and between those two mountains here. All right, and all my mountains are done. My sky, my water, and my mountains. Now I have to wait until they dry up a little bit because I can't really move on to adding all those beautiful uh, trees until my mountains dry up. So I'm gonna wait. But as they dry up, what I could do is I could start on a base of my dock here because I have to paint the whole base first before I can move on to chair and a table. So that's what I'm gonna do. And for that, I'm gonna need to make my brown. So I'm gonna start by mixing a base brown. It's just gonna be mixing a standard dark brown. I'm gonna grab my large brush. I will scoop some yellow on the side. I'll scoop some red on the side. I'll say about equal parts, more or less. Mix them up and then start adding black tiny touch by tiny touch to this mixture. Add a little bit of black, mix it up fully. If it was enough, awesome. If it wasn't enough, then add more. I'm just gonna continue doing that little by little. I think this is a good color. Looks like a dark brown to me. And um, troubleshooting for brown, if it looks a little bit on a red side, that means you don't have enough yellow. Just add a bit more red, yellow. If it looks a bit more like on a greenish side, it has like a green or undertone, that means you don't have enough red. So just add more red. If it looks too orange, you don't have enough black. If it looks too gray, you don't have enough both yellow and red, but mostly red. And that is my dark brown. Now that I have my dark brown, I'm actually gonna make um, my base color for this, which is not gonna be a dark brown, it's gonna be a medium brown. So I'll take whatever I have left on my brush, and maybe even a little bit more. And I'll mix it with some white to create a nice medium brown. That's all we're looking for, nothing particular, just something medium. And then with this medium brown, I'm gonna color in the entire dock. And then once I have my base, while it's wet, I'm gonna blend in highlights and shadows. And you can do this, or you can continue working with a large brush, or you can switch to a medium one. I personally think medium one is just easier to work with here. Um, so I'm gonna go with a medium brush. And you're just gonna take some white and blend in straight white in a couple areas, while it's still super wet, just horizontal brush strokes. And it's almost gonna give it the look of um, being separated on a little wood planks.
All right, I love this. This looks nice, the color. Really like it. And then you're gonna do the same with the dark brown. So you're gonna wash your brush. You're just gonna take your dark straight brown that we just mixed and try this one to kind of almost add it in between the areas that you added in the white, because otherwise they will blend into that medium brown again and there'll be no point. So kind of almost try to flick it in between when possible. So you're not bringing it back to the state of just one medium brown. And don't over blend this. That is super important too. Because if you're over, over blended, again, it's just gonna turn into one medium brown. All right, this is good, I'm happy with this. And with my dark brown, I'm actually gonna add those poles on the side. So do you see, I'm gonna do three on each side. Um, first one being somewhere at the edge. They're all going to be vertical. So no matter how much you might want to tilt them this way or that way, it's straight vertical. Straight vertical one, straight vertical two, straight vertical three. It's one side, and then somewhere on the other side. And then while they're still wet, you can just take a little bit of white and then a little flick to the right side. And you will see it will blend into a medium brown, which is great. That's exactly what we want. That's why we're adding it on wet. All right, now we're going to let it dry. It's not done. We're just going to let it dry up. The base for it is done. But the whole thing is not done. But yeah, we're going to let it dry up. And I'll actually give you guys a minute to catch up because I know it's a lot going on here. And I can see by the number of views that some of you are actually painting along. So I'll just give you maybe two minutes um, to see if you can finish up. And then we're going to move to our trees. My trees are actually, uh, my mountains are dry. So I could already move to my mountains, um, to my trees. If yours are not dry yet, that's okay. Um, you can always either wait or you can blow dry them to speed up the process. I probably, again, if you're trying to keep up and do it along um, as we are live on YouTube, you could probably, your best bet would be to speed it up by using some blow dryer, but whatever works. And I'll give you guys two minutes for this.
All right, so hopefully we all caught up and I'm gonna move to our cheese here. So here is where you may actually need a blow dryer, depending on how heavy handed you are, the type of paint you use, uh, how warm it is in the area that you're in, the brushes, and a lot of factors. Um, you may or may not be able to do this without a blow dryer. I mean, you can always do it without a blow dryer. It just, again, depends on how much you wanna wait for the drying times. And again, depending on the type of paint and all other stuff, you may be able to do it without having the drying time in between, or you may not be able to do it without having to dry in between. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start with yellow here, then I'm gonna move to orange, then I'm gonna move to red, and then I'm gonna move to green, then I'm gonna move to black and brown, then I'm gonna move to purple. So there's a lot of colors and all of it is gonna be dabbing. And um, if you find that at any point it starts turning into a big bloody mess, that's when you know that you just need to take a blow dryer and blow dry it, or you need to take a five minute break and let it dry. So that's the criteria for how do I know if I need a blow dryer. If it starts turning into a mess, that's how you know. I'm gonna start here with my medium brush, but large brush may also work for the beginning of it, um, but it's not gonna work past halfway through point, but I'm just not even gonna bother with it. I'm gonna go with a medium brush right away. And the first color I'm gonna go with is gonna be yellow, but this time you're not trying to create this pastel, barely visible yellow. You're actually keeping it vibrant, but you still have to add some white to it. So I'm gonna take some yellow, mix it with white. Decent amount of white still, and the reason is, um, if I add my yellow over this dark mountain without any white, it's not gonna look yellow. Cause semi, um, student grade acrylic tends to be semi-transparent. I know my paint is, and any student grade acrylic I've ever used, except maybe one brand, is very semi-transparent. So you can see everything underneath it. So when you work over darker areas, you always have to add white into it. If your paint already has pre-mixed white, you know your paint, if it's not semi-transparent and it's pretty solid, you don't need to mix it with white. Just use it as is straight out of the bottle. You would know. All right, then I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna start dabbing, almost like a little rose here. And covering the section. And by the way, yes, don't go past that line. Don't go past the line. We're gonna go with other colors past the line. Don't go past the line right now. Uh, if you still see your line or just imagine where the line was before and just keep that in your imagination as you do this. And don't go all the way to the bottom either. So do you see this middle line? You see how I'm stepping a little bit before that? Not a lot before that, just a touch before that. Basically, that's what I'm doing. So I'm adding almost like the base here in this yellow. And some of my mountains still see through and that's okay. I, I, it reads yellow and that's what matters to me. As long as it really reads yellow, I'm happy with it. All right, so that's my first layer. My first layer, my first color. Now, for the bottom, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Literally nothing different. All right, two colors, done. 
Awesome. Next one is orange. So, to the same color you just used, you can use that as a base or makes a whole new one. Doesn't matter, whatever it works for you. I'll use the same one and I'll just add a little bit of red and maybe a little bit more yellow. And there we go. I have my light, beautiful orange. And now I'm gonna dab some in orange. So I'm gonna go right here. Now with this color, you can go a bit above that line, whether you can still see it or whether it's imaginary at this point, and some down. So we imagining that there are some orange trees peeking through, orange leaves, the trees peeking through. Uh, maybe I'll go right here too. We will now add some closer to the bottom here. And then I'll just mirror all that to the bottom. So whatever I did on top, I'll do the same thing on the bottom. All right, awesome, moving to next one. I think I'm gonna go with red. So, but I'm not gonna use my red that come, as it comes from the bottle because it comes a bit on a pinker side. So do you see, if I water it down as it normally comes, it almost looks pink and I don't want that. I want it to look actually super red. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my red and I'll just add some yellow to it. It's not gonna visually change much of the color in fact, it looks red before, it still looks red, but it gives a different undertone. It gives it this orangey, more flame kind of undertone, which is what I'm looking for. And I'm gonna dab next with my red. Oh, there are a lot of where I'm gonna go with red, pretty much to almost like the whole tops. And now you can definitely go above that imaginary or still visible line that we sketched. So some of it is gonna go up, some of it is gonna to go down to create almost like, again, a little rose. And I'm using just the tip of my brush. So do you see as they go up, they get really small, those little dabs. As they go down, they get really small too. So you could use a small brush for this if you prefer. I find the medium for me personally is perfect. Small one will make me very frustrated because it will take a very long time and I'm not the most patient painter. Let's see for yourself. And I'm, but I'm also not perfectionist, just FYI. I don't have a perfectionistic bone in me. I like abstract free flow things. I like the messiness. I embrace it and I love it. 
But I know not everyone like that. Some people get very stressed by messiness. And what brings me joy may actually make you want to lose your mind. <laughs> so if that's you and you more of a measuring stick kind of girl or guy, um, or you're just a strict perfectionist, you might want to grab a small brush because small brush will, will give you more precision and more ability to make those dabs going up and down really fine and make it look more like a pointy tree in the distance. But just heads up, keep in mind, it will take forever. So medium, I find medium brush is like best of the both worlds. It still gives you ability to make those fine lines, fine dabs going up and down to make it look like pointy trees in a distance, but it takes half the time that it would take with a small brush. I don't know what right here. It's going to be a very red spot. What's the goal? The goal is to have variety. So you don't have to position your colors exactly like a position mine. What we're looking for in the end is just a beautiful variety of colors. They all merge into one another and create one big Sure. The gorgeous trees in the distance. All right, for me, this is happiness. I like that. I'm going to mirror all that to the bottom now. I'm gonna go to this beautiful, very red spot here.
All right, and there's one more color here that's super compatible that I wanna add right away. And that's gonna be um, red mixed with black. So to the same red I just used, I'm gonna add in a little bit of black. You see, it doesn't look like brown. It's more like wine color in a way. But also you could use dark brown instead of this. I prefer personally red mixed with black because it's a slightly different shade. And I'm gonna add it in some areas where I did red. So as an addition, and it's just gonna make it look darker, make it look like a burgundy color in certain areas. Make it look a little less vibrant too because everything right now is glowing. But again, we're keeping the vibe a bit more muted. So I'm gonna mute it in a way with this color. Not everywhere, but in a couple sections. So I'm gonna add some right here, right here. So wherever you feel like it needs a little bit of muting. It also makes it look a little more realistic too. All right, so I muted some areas on top, and again, I'm gonna just add the same areas on the bottom. All right, done, done, done. I really like what it looks like. So you could technically um, move right away and continue working on it, or you can let it dry now and work a little bit on a bottom. So it really is up to you where you wanna go with this. Um, I think I wouldn't mind going a little bit on a bottom at this point, just to give it a bit more time to dry naturally, um, because next the color we're gonna move on to is gonna be green, then it's gonna be brown, then it's gonna be black, then it's gonna be white. So we might as well just work a little bit on our chair and the table and start them because they will not be done in one layer either. So we may as well, right? And uh, for the table and the chair, use whatever works for you. Medium brush may be a good option, a small brush may be even better option. So see for yourself, again, depends on the size of your canvas and on the size of your brushes. So what I'm gonna start with, um, if you don't have your outline yet, you start by adding your outline. If you still have your outline, you see how in my case, you still somewhat see it visible underneath everything that's going on, great. You can just re-outline it to make it a little bit more visible. But this time, do you remember how the first time I was really messy with it? Because again, it's underlay, it's just a sketch, who cares? This time you cannot afford being that messy. You have to be a bit more precise and then maybe use a little less lines overall. Or make sure this is fully drying because then you can be messy and then you can take an eraser and clean it up and only leave the lines that you want. So all those are options. For me personally, I can still see my lines, so it shouldn't be a big deal. I can just make it clean right away. So I'm adding it, and again, you, you can see it very well because we're adding it on a darker colors, and that's okay. That's a good thing. You don't need to see it very well, as long as you somewhat see it. So our chair. Maybe a blanket over it. Armrest. Please. 
for anyone who is like, I have no idea what you're doing there because I can see nothing. This is exactly why I showed how to sketch all of this up front when we just had a white background because you're not going to be able to see anything right now because we have a dark background at this point. And it's really hard to see anything on a dark background. So do you see, I just re-outlined everything and then I'm going to take my medium brown. I still have some dark brown, right? I'm going to take it, mix it with my white, make my medium brown again. Similar to the color I originally used to start my dock with. So it doesn't have to be that precise color, but something medium. And I'm going to fill in the tabletop. You can avoid mug or add mug on top later. Either is fine. Just going to avoid it. I'm going to add color in the table and the bottom part here too, this little leg there or whatever that's called. And then I'm going to color in with this medium brown the back of my chair except what's going to be covered by a blanket. For anyone who's not doing blanket, then it's going to be the whole back of a chair. And also the seat. So my seat is right here. And this is my armrest. Armrest, the top of armrest is also going to be colored in this color. The rest are not going to be medium brown. The rest is actually going to be dark brown. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch my brush. I'll grab a small brush now. If I can find it, oh, there it is. And I'm gonna grab my dark brown this time. And what I'm gonna start with here is, I'm gonna start by dividing this back of a chair into a couple segments by adding vertical lines in dark brown. Then I'm going to have the bottom that connects them all. And a little piece here on the top that holds it all together as well. I'm going to add, and, um, add a side, like a thickness width for the armrest. And I'm going to divide a seat into planks as well and I'll add a side to the seat as well. Then I'll add all the other connecting elements. So I'm going to add a leg here, this that connects this. I'm going to add this rocking part chair, the rocking chair part part that actually walks. And whatever is visible behind my blanket on the other side, and for those of you who are not doing the blanket, all of it, then all of it. And then I'll do the width of my Table, so the thickness of a tabletop. And the leg. And the little stand on the bottom, again, the thickness of it. And then I can do highlights right away. So again, it was just a little bit. I will wash my brush, dab it on a paper towel. It's just a little bit of white. You can even water it down or just dry brush it so it's not like whole large blobs of white. I'm going to add, oh, that's too much white. Let's get rid of some of it on my brush. I'm going to start adding highlights here. 
using the small brush again. So right here. Something between those pieces here. And a little highlights to all the other dark pieces here. So wherever the light would be hitting them. And I can add a first layer on both um, towel and a mug. So towel and a mug to make them super vibrant, right? I'm actually gonna do them in multiple layers. So for the first layer, I'm gonna take some of my red and I'll mix a little bit of white in it. So it's almost gonna look pinkish and that's okay. Cause that's just the first layer. I'm, put, I'm putting it for the base because once this dries and we add second layer, they're actually gonna start glowing and be super vibrant. But we have to add this weird looking first layer first. All right, so I added the first layer on my throw and on my mug. Done. Now I'm gonna let it dry. There's still a lot to add to the dock and the elements on it. But we're just gonna let it dry for now and we're gonna go back to our trees. So I'm gonna switch my brush to a medium brush and I'm gonna make green. In my case, it's gonna be darker green, but any shade of green will do whatever works for you. Green is yellow and blue. Here we go, that's a base for the green. Now, if you wanna give it some shade, you can add to it. So for example, if you want it uh, colder, add more blue. If you want it, Dimmer, you can add a bit of black. If you want it more of like a burnt um, green, you can add a bit of red or brown. If you want it emerald, more blue and white. If you want it lighter, more yellow, gra grass green, more yellow and white. So whatever you want to it. I think I'm gonna stick with this dark one, but I will add a tiny smidge of red because I just wanna give it like a little more of a swampy undertone. I want to get rid of that emerald undertone. Not there is anything that there is anything wrong with it. It's just not what I'm feeling like right now. So I'm gonna make it a little bit more muted. And with this color, I'm gonna go on the bottom and I'll add it wherever I think it needs to. So now you can actually do from this bottom line. You don't have to leave a gap there. So I'm gonna add a little bit right here. And again, same way, dabby dabby dubs like little lines.
All right, so let's here, and I mirrored it to the bottom right away because I found it was easier. All right, maybe I'll do some right here. I'll do this whole section. All right, so I added quite a bit of green. Again, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna let it be, and I'm gonna move straight to my next color, which is gonna be dark brown. I still have a bit of that brown we originally mixed. So I'm gonna use that, and for the rest of the bottom, I'm gonna do brown, but I'll also overlap brown over certain areas of my green. So you can actually start by just like dubbing up of the line here in dark brown might find it easier you have everything covered i'm going right over my green with that again if you feel like it's creating a big big mess let it dry in my case i think it's doing good all right, and now I'm just gonna start in certain areas to dab it up. Certain areas a bit high and certain areas not as high. I'm almost like merging, marrying my brown into the rest of the image. All right, that looks really good. And again, I'm just gonna let that be for a little bit. And then I'll move there with white and with black. And as that's drying, I can move back to this area and work here. So what I'm gonna do now, we don't have any shadows. So what I'm, I'll do is I'll take a little bit of this dark brown on my medium brush. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of a shadow. So there's going to be a shadow underneath this table. Just dry brush it on. You see just a little bit, then I'm going to dry brush some shadow here underneath the chair and a little bit on the right of it because my light is coming from the left. So the shadow will be going towards the right. See just a little bit of a shadow there. So it doesn't look like it's floating in the air. And the shadow is going to be going uh, out of this little sections here too. And then I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. 
and you use the same dark brown and you can technically even use black if you wanted to but I find your dark brown is a little softer and we're just going to add a couple more separation lines here And then we can add second layer on our mug and a blankie. And that's where you're gonna add the color that you want it to be. So in my case, again, I'm gonna take some of my red. I'll add in a little bit of yellow just to give it that shade, different shade, just a touch. And with this beautiful glowing red, I'm gonna add second layer and that's gonna be, it's gonna start really popping. Oh yeah, now we see they're super vibrant. And to finish it up, while it's still wet, I'm gonna take just a little bit of black on my small brush. And I'm gonna add like a darker section here on the right of the row here. A little bit on the bottom for a design. And a bit on the mug to shape it, with just a touch. Of course, you can add the beverage. My this is going to be coffee. And of course, the same with highlights. So wash your brush. Take a little bit of white, and while it's still wet, can add. Oops, too much. Okay, yeah, that's better. Some white, and it will blend, and that's great. That's exactly why we're doing it on wet. So it does blend a little bit. Look softer. All right, that looks awesome. Now, another thing that I can add white here while I wait for the rest to dry up for a couple more minutes is my dock. So I'm going to add my final white. So I'm going to grab medium brush. You can even grab large because we're going to be dry brushing it. So grab either medium or large brush, just a tiny smidge of white and then really rub it into your brush. Like really, really, really rub it in. Then if it's too much, you can even dab it off on a paper towel. And then we're going to lightly, very lightly, Add some more right here. Especially you see the round that shadow to show what's in the shadow, what's in the light. It really does help define it a little bit. It also it makes the whole dock a little more interesting. So my dock and um, this all is done. The only thing that I'm gonna add a bit of steam, but that's when my background is done. Actually, there's one little thing I'm gonna add on a dock, just straight white highlight on with little vertical pieces. All right, that is done. Then I can move back here. And hopefully this is a dry or dry-ish. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take small brush and white. And this time, I usually water down my white regardless, even um, though I'm planning to use it super white, I don't want it transparent, 
I'm still going to water it down because I want it to, to be liquid because I want to make fine lines. And I find that my paint is too thick to make fine lines without watering down. So I'm just going to water it down a little bit so it gets a bit more liquid, but not, um, not going to water it down enough so it's transparent. And I'm going to start by putting my line back, the one that separates water from the trees. And you see, I'm not doing one straight, I'm more doing it from combination of multiple lines. And then I'm going to continue bringing those down. So continue adding those lines as I go down. So you see, as I go lower and lower, it's less and less of those lines. And then I'm just gonna add a couple of to the sides here. And then I'll add a couple of vertical pieces from that main line to indicate um, highlights on some of the tree trunks. It doesn't matter where you add those vertical pieces, wherever it feels right for you. Just a couple. And then optionally, only if you want to, you can take some black and you can add a bit on the slide or extra contrast. In my case, it personally doesn't need it at all. I have plenty of contrast. But if you feel like for you it's needed a little bit here along this uh, main line, you can if you want to dab a couple of pieces in, uh, of trees, even in black going up, or even add a couple of tree trunks, you can. But again, see for yourself. In my case, it doesn't need it. So I'm not going to be doing it. But if you feel like it does need it for you, go ahead. And then the last thing, what I'll finish with is that little steam coming out of my hot, hot beverage. So I'm gonna take some white. You see, it looks in white. However, for the very bottom part, I'm also gonna take a smidge of brown tiny smidge, and I'm just going to darken up a portion of it very, very lightly. Do you see? Closer to my actual mug, so I can see it a little better there, because it's such a light area there, but if I don't do it, I'm just not going to see it at all. And after that, I am officially done. The only thing that's left here for me is to sign it. So I'm going to choose a spot. And I'm going to put my initials. I'm going to put them right here, but you can sign yours anywhere you want. You can put your full name or your initials or anything else that you would like. And guys, please feel free to share your results with us. I will make sure once I'm finished, I will edit the description of this video to make sure there is a link added where you can share them. It's a Facebook group. We do have a Facebook group where we encourage everyone to share their results. So it feels like we did it together. So feel free to do that. And then you can take a look at how other people's turned out if there if they're other people who share it as well. So yeah, feel free to do that. Um, if you're drunk or not, that's okay. Don't feel obligated. But of course, we always love seeing how they turned out. And for those of you guys who are brand new and maybe you just accidentally stumbled on our channel today, so glad you're here, so glad you joined. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you had fun and learned something new. Feel free to just check out all the other videos we already have here. We never remove them, they stay here forever so you can come back to them any day. 
And we do add new videos as in like pre-recorded video tutorials sometimes. Sometimes we go live just like this at about once to twice a week. So feel free what we have scheduled as far as live um, paintings and drawings coming up within the next months, two months and a half. They're all on our channel. Feel free to see if anything piques your interest. And if you guys enjoyed this tutorial and you want to say thank you by tipping me, you are more than welcome to do that. Tips are always, always appreciated, but never an obligation. I'll add a PayPal uh, link in the description and you can just click on it and send any amount. Again, everything is always appreciated. And for those of you guys who signed a dub through our website and who pre-tipped even in advance without knowing how it's going to turn out um, because they have faith in my teaching abilities, so I really, really appreciate you guys. Thank you for doing that. Yeah, and there's lots more tutorials on our website. You're welcome to check them out too. The link is in the description. And if it's not, then I will make sure to add it. That's pretty much it. That's a beautiful end of fall painting. So hopefully you can hang it on your wall or in your cottage or in your trailer or um, you know, put it on your desk. So when you work, there's something nice to look forward to or just, you know, something that reminds you of peace and solitude and a hot cup of something yummy, yummy. Does anyone have questions? If you guys do, please ask away. Um, I'm all ears and I'll be happy to answer all of them for you. I'll give you another minute to see if there is anything that anyone is curious about. Um, and if not, I'm going to let you all finish in peace. I know this one is a lot of work, even at my pace with a minimal amount of waiting. It took us almost two hours, which is, whoa, that's a long time. Um, so yeah, feel free to make this a couple day project. If you're only halfway through and you feel like I'm like losing my mind here, getting tired, it's perfectly normal. You generally, um, we don't recommend going past two hour mark in one setting because you do get tired and then you start making mistakes. It just, um, unless you're inspired and you just want to finish it in one sitting. Once you hit two hour mark, you always, always, always need to take a nice long break and maybe even come back to it another day because again, that's the mark at which you start making mistakes and you just get a little sloppy with how you do things. So yeah, if you're there and if you're feeling it, take a break. If you're there and you feel inspired and like you got your second breath, second wind, then go for it, finish it. Yay, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Well, thank you all for joining me. I don't see any questions, so I guess I did a good job explaining. I'll take it as that. <laughs> and if you think of questions later, you can always either Post them here in comments or email us to get a faster response or message us on Facebook. All of that are all of those are good options. So thanks for joining me, guys. Enjoy the rest of your night. Bye, everyone.